Um, I'm Vicky, I'm one of the pilots and um, I'm about to fly this aircraft which is Bravo Lima to the Antarctic. We're currently in Rocky Mountain Aircraft in uh, Calgary in Springbank Airport. Just prepping it ready to go for the ferry in a couple of days. So the ferry flight, we fly single crew as in one pilot but we always have two people on board. So I'll be taking Eli, the engineer. Two aircraft are gonna to go together. So I'm in Bravo Lima and pilot Ollie and uh, new pilot Tom and engineer Jeremy will be in Bravo Charlie. So BAS has aircraft in order to support the science that we do. So our main reason for being there is to do uh, science in the Antarctic, to understand how the Antarctic uh, affects the rest of the world, particularly with the climate change and how that might affect sea levels and things. So we have four aircraft, four twin otters. So we're basically moving both the scientists, all their support staff and team, tents, food, fuel, and all the science equipment. And we move them in these twin otters uh, once we're into the Antarctic, because these twin otters can operate on skis. Um, and then we also have another aircraft, a larger one, a Dash 7, that we use to bring passengers into the Antarctic. So maybe 16 at a time. Whereas in the Twin Otters, we just generally work with maybe three or four passengers on board and a lot of kit, a lot of cargo. Mm -hmm. um, we're in Canada because that's where they get maintained. Um, the Canadian engineers are renowned for looking after Canadian aircraft. Um, and so they come up here in March each year and then we come out in October once they've had a really deep maintenance and then we take them back down to the Antarctic. So that's what we're just about to start is the ferry flight down south. I look forward to the whole season. It's so cool. It's what we do here at Rocky Mountain Aircraft. We're more on the overhaul side of things. So you never really get to see the operation side. You never get to see the planes that you fix fly. So when you go down there, you, you get to see your work in action. One of the coolest feelings on earth. As an engineer, um, again, we fly with the aircraft in case anything breaks. But again, I'm getting paid to fly from North America all the way down to Antarctica. So you get to try new foods, you get to see new things. I lived in Canada my whole life. I've never left the country until I went to Antarctica. So it gave me a really good opportunity to travel and explore more of the world. The Twin Otter is an aircraft that you cannot replace right now. It is amazing in its performance, especially its stall ability, a short takeoff and landing. It's rugged, it's like a pickup truck of the sky. So this thing, you can land it wherever you want, whatever sort of conditions, you can land on ice, you can land on sea, you can land on gravel, asphalt, whatever you want to land on, you're capable of landing on it in a Twin Otter. I really love flying the Twin Otter, especially up here in the gear here, we have these huge compression blocks, these big rubber blocks which allow us to take so much punishment, allows you to operate from these incredible places in the mountains, in Antarctica, in the, yeah, in the, in the white, white, vast white plateau as well. So it allows you to, to go anywhere and do anything, um, in, which is what I think is amazing about the airplane and that's why I love, love work fast. So typically the journey is about 11 days. Um, you travel from, again, Calgary, you have two stops in the US, one stop in Mexico, one stop Panama, one stop in um, Peru, and then four stops in Chile before you hop over to um, Antarctica. I am loading uh, flight plans, which I've looked at um, briefly at this point. This would be the flight from Cheyenne in the US um, to Amarillo in Texas, further south. We can often be leaving Canada in snowstorms and then as we move through the states uh, we get down to the Caribbean and then you've got the challenges of potentially very very heavy rain in thunderstorms and lightning which can also damage the aircrafts. A little bit further down we often get fog on the western side of the Andes down on the coastline um, and then finally coming into Punta Arenas which is our last port of call in southern Chile before we get to the Antarctic. It's very very windy it can often be 50, touching 50 knots, so we have to just watch out for any kind of crosswind um, or severe winds when we get to Punta. The most challenging thing is always being ready. Like the pilot's job during the day, they're meant to fly us, take care of us. The engineer's job 
is after we land, if anything breaks, you need to be able to fix it. You need to be well rested, you need to know what you're doing, you need to have the parts ready, and you gotta be able to hit the ground and go to avoid delays. So it was in the kind of inside pocket. Inside so this pocket? Inside okay. pocket. There's three little inside pockets here, oh, and it was in that little pouch. Okay, um, have a look. It's actually attached to it as well. So there's a huge amount of preparation for the ferry flight that goes on in Cambridge. That starts with our air ops um, coordinator to our managers from the overflight clearances. You know, there's um, eight countries that we are flying over, which require different kind of clearances. There's often a diplomatic issues with some of the countries that we're flying over. Arranging all the logistics of that, the, the hotels, the fuel car needs, the, the customs there. It starts months in advance with our dedicated team in Cambridge. And as we get close to the day, that's when the pilots start getting involved, and start looking at the local routes, the, the weather. And it, as it gets closer to the days before, like for example, we are now, it's then just making sure all the due diligence is, is done, make sure that all the, the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted, and we just get everything on in the right place so that when we go through is as smooth as it possibly can be, transferring an aircraft full of spare parts and, and uh, weird equipment and trying to explain to people why you're a British Antarctic Survey aircraft in the middle of Panama on a 30 degree step. So we have things like Spanish language letters to explain <laughs> why are you actually here? I'm Jeremy Amora. I'm an aircraft maintenance engineer here at Rocky Mountain Aircraft. And this is my first year going down with the Bass Crew. Yeah. And what does it feel like? Oh, it's exciting. There's a lot we've learned to prep and get ready for this trip. There's a lot of gear here that we have to go through, to see if everything fits. But it's exciting to go down, also a little nerve wracking. I'm just worried about leaving everyone here, leaving all the family, but they all understand. It's a really great experience. So. It'd be a shame if I passed up on joining the crew this season. As always, I've always been very hands-on, working on everything and learning how everything works. So the aircraft always interested me. Here in Alberta, they have a program for aircraft maintenance, and I took that on around uh, six years ago, and brought me to where I am today. Doing the fuel of oils, yeah. and you'll set the empty oil can on the wing, and then go. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> For me, the biggest challenge will be learning the whole process and how all of our operations go. You can see photos of it, but it can never do it justice when you're there, when you're breathing in there, when you're taking in the whole environment and everything. It's incredible. Penguins in their natural habitat, whales breaching, all sorts of wildlife you'd never see anywhere else. It, it, it gives me a real serenity on a really good weather day when you've got uh, quite clear skies, some amazing light, and the scenery is magical. And in the air, it's all very calm and serene um, on those days until you get on the ground and then suddenly the the hectic uh, unloading and offloading and refueling begins again. Um, but flying over some of the scenery in the Antarctic is incredibly special. And when you get to share that with a co-pilot who, well, we call them co-pilots, they sit in the right-hand seat, that has possibly never flown in a little plane before, certainly never flown in the Antarctic, it can be pretty mind-blowing, and it certainly was for me. So when I uh, share that experience with them, that's pretty special too.